Hey guys, Frank Cox here, the Barbecue Pit Engineer, and on today's episode, I'm going to show you how to prep a brand new barrel from our Super 55 kit for paint, so you can do a killer paint job like these. Stay tuned. All right, guys, welcome back. Hey, I'm super glad you're watching this video. And if you don't know what our Super 55 Drum Smoker Kit is, there's a link in the description. You can click on that and go check it out. Essentially, it's a DIY kit or a complete barrel uh, that I'll build out myself to look like these. It's a drum smoker. It'll run itself for 19 hours. And I guarantee you'll like it more than your pellet grill or any other thing that you perceive as set it and forget it barbecues. So, this is a real live fire, and I think you'll get some great barbecue off of it. But anyway, in this video, I'm going to show you how to prep your barrel. Now, if you order the kit by itself, you'll get that box up there, which has everything in it. There's nothing out of that except a barrel. That's the only thing you're missing. The box right underneath of it includes a barrel just like this one. Now, this one's already been pre-drilled for uh, the customer I'm building it for. And uh, we're going to go ahead and just sand this thing off and we're going to clean it up and, and all of that. So just kind of follow along with me. If you're doing your own right now, that would be great. So here we go. Okay, so we're going to go over a couple of things that you're going to have to have whenever you're doing this. The first thing you're going to have to do is we're going to wipe all of the oil off of this drum. Now, I prefer to use like these lint-free kind of, they're blue mechanics towels. You can get them at Harbor Freight. Pretty much everything here you can get, even the extension cords, you can get at Harbor Freight on the cheap if, if money's an object. But these blue towels are like $3 a roll, I think something like that. They don't really leave a lot of lint uh, when you're wiping. Another kind of towel we use is one called a microfiber towel, and those seem to work pretty good too. Um, I just hate to buy those microfiber towels, use them for lacquer thinner, and then pretty much they're just a, a fuse that you can throw out in the yard and it'll catch on fire, you know. These right here are just trash. I'll throw them away when I'm done. So then we're going to use mineral spirits. And I'll tell you why I'm going to use mineral spirits on this particular cleanup. So the paint that I use is by Rust-Oleum, and I'll show you that paint here in a minute. Um, but I get it at Menards. It's, it's not really expensive paint. That blue color and that gray color, they're, the blue color is a custom tint that we have made for us. Um, the gray is a shelf color. It's called machine gray. Um, this is not a high temperature paint. And that paint says on the label to prep and clean with mineral spirits. Now, if you're a hardcore body body guy or and you're watching this video, you know there's a lot of other stuff out there that you can use everything from naphtha to uh, whatever that ZX whatever chemical stuff is. There's There's all kinds of junk you can use. But specifically, if the, my recommendation is if the can of paint says to use a certain thing to prep with, use that thing. There's a reason they said it. Probably has something to do with how friendly that cleanup chemical or thinning chemical is with the chemistry of that paint that you're using. Now, this Rust-Oleum paint that I use is in a quart can, and we spray it with what's called an HVLP gun, which is the gun that you see everybody use. It's a gravity feed. It's, it's a gun that you spray with like this, hooked up to air. Um, high velocity, low pressure is what that means. And we can just mix that paint. We can thin it a little bit, whatever, dump it in that canister on the top of it, and we can start spraying. Um, that's a lot more efficient for coverage than a rattle can, for instance. If you use a rattle can, you're going to run into issues with overlap and tiger striping and stuff like that, where these guns, you, whenever you mix the paint right and get and everything's clean and all of that, you could actually do a really good uniform spray pattern. And you can actually control how heavy your coats are um, by, by controlling how much paint goes in the gun and stuff. On this video, I'm not showing you how to paint. We actually have a different video about painting. It's a talking head video with me and a guy named Daryl, who's a professional painter uh, for a lot of years. And he's telling us all about it. It's, it's about a year ago we did that video. But Anyway, so we're going to talk about the prep side of this because you'll learn in that other video, 90% of the issues you're going to have with your paint are spurred from some kind of a prep issue. Either it wasn't clean enough, it wasn't etched enough whenever you were doing that, the surface temperature is too cold, something like that, or the, even the environment is too cold. So you really want to be conscious of all of that. So anyway, like I said, we're using mineral spirits. I got this at Menards. It's super cheap, sunny side, low order, odor, which I don't know about that low odor thing because I do smell it everywhere I go. 
The other thing you're going to have to have is some sandpaper. Now, you can hand sand this with just a sheet of paper in your hand or a block or something like that. Personally, I don't really care about all of that. I use a random orbit sander. And this sander, I'm not an affiliate, just so you know. I have no, no skin in the game with Harbor Freight other than I spend a lot of money there. Um, this sander from Harbor Freight, this round one, I can't remember. I think it's somewhere around $29 or $39 or something like that. It's super cheap. Random orbit just simply means that this will spin, but at the same time it's spinning, it's actually oscillating like that, side to side. So what it does is it leave, it doesn't leave like a really noticeable pattern to your sanding. Um, these discs are what's called hook and loop. So this has like a hook like pattern on the bottom of it and these kind of feel fuzzy. And when you stick them on there, it, it adheres easily. So you can rip one off, put another one on, and that hook and loop pad is not going to wear out. I generally use somewhere around 120 to 150 grit. I've used whatever I've had around in the past as well, like an 80 grit sandpaper. And today the sandpaper I'm using is pretty affordable too. You get this at Harbor Freight, it's like nine bucks. There's like, uh, how many in here? There's 15 discs in here. And these are all 120 grit. They've got all different size grits. Um, you can use whatever you want, but like I say, 150 is good enough for me. I can generally get about, I don't know, four barrels out of one disc. Um, the, the way these discs are made, they've got holes in them. And so as this thing is moving and all of that, there's some air sucking through or blowing out. I think it's actually sucking through this and it's blowed out into this filter right here that catches a lot of the airborne particles that would normally clog your pad on the, their sanding pad. So that's that helps these pads last a lot longer. Um, now, the order of what we're doing here, we got to clean it first. If we don't clean the surface material first, then we're going to basically sand the oil or the rust inhibitor or people's oil off their hands. You'll see fingerprints on these barrels and stuff. Whatever was on it is going to get sanded down into the pores of the metal. We don't want to do that because it could cause us some paint ad adhering issues. So we're going to set this out of the way for a minute right here. First thing we're going to do is grab our paper towels, and I do recommend you do this in a well-ventilated area. You can't see it, but there's two big bay doors here, and there's a good enough breeze going through. And what I'll do is I'll fold this towel in half about, I don't know, three times. usually feels about good. And then uh, just apply just a little bit of this. I'm not going to wipe this whole barrel down on camera. I'll do it off camera, but just a little bit of mineral spirits on there will hit that. And then literally, you're just going to wipe every surface. And as you go, you'll start to see dirt picking up on this pad. Depending on how old the barrel is and uh, where it came from, because I get them from several different places, uh, and what they used on it. Now, the barrels behind me do not have any coatings on them from the factory. It's just, it's just good old, plain old steel. And you'll see from time to time, there'll be some little surface rust and stuff on there. Like, for instance, right here, there's a couple fingerprints on this barrel. I don't know if you can see in the camera with the light. But I don't even care about that. Because when I sand over that, it's going to knock it down enough that it's not going to show through my paint here in a minute. Now, another thing I should point out is the paint we're going to be using is what's called a DTM paint, which means direct to metal. So the paint, that's one reason I really like Rust-Oleum paint, is because it does self-etch. You do not need to use a primer. As a matter of fact, in the past, I've used a primer, and it caused me some wrinkling effects in the paint. Usually that has something to do with uh, your, uh, whatever that's called, your, your time in between coats. I can't remember off the top of my head right now, but you put a coating on, then you walk away for a minute, and it just kind of has to set for a minute and usually what that is is fumes coming out of the paint layer and uh, giving it a chance to uh, I wish I could remember what that is anyway you guys will get me in the comments I'm sure but anyway that uh, that dry time in between coats is really important if sometimes that will cause if you cover over it that will cause the bottom layer to let loose and start to wrinkle up but in this case if you put a primer on and the paint does not require a primer, or it requires a different primer than what you have, that because it has to match. If it doesn't match, then you'll still get that, the top coat will pull the bottom coat off. 
So I prefer to use a direct metal paint. I don't have to deal with primer coats. You know, after all, this is a drum smoker and they used to be called ugly drums. So it's going to get cooked on. It's going to get grease on it. We're going to haul it around all the time. It's going to be pushed by somebody and run into something if it's got wheels on it, you know, so I don't really get hung up on it. Um, to each his own, though. I heard one guy say one time, everybody eats his hot dog a different way, you know. So anyway, now we would just continue that process on the side of this barrel. So now we're going to go ahead and pretend. I already wiped this lid down pretty good. I'm not really worried about anything else on it. We're going to go ahead and move on to the sanding phase. Stay tuned. Hey, real quick, one thing I forgot uh, before we move on, because I just said we're going to move on. One thing I forgot is as your rag, as your towel loads up with dirt, like see this has got rust on it, sometimes it'll be black with grease. As you go, fold that in half and then look at, see how the bottom side of that is clean? Now I can put fresh uh, cleaner on this side of my towel. That's why I fold this so many times. So you can fold it up, put a new coat, new uh, bit of cleaner on there, and then you can move on to the next phase of wiping down your barrel. Okay, guys, we're back. Um, we just went ahead and wiped down this whole barrel, uh, moving on from there. I'm going to go ahead and change this pad real quick just to kind of show you how easy it is to do that. So you just literally pull it off. You can see there's some dirt under this pad where it's been sucking air through there. We just get rid of that. Put a new pad on there. Like I said a minute ago, too, just, just so you know, um, the uh, you want to make sure you're in a well ventilated area. If in fact you know a spark hits or something like that, you know, and you got your your towel sitting right next to you where you were just using the the mineral spirits or whatever uh, cleaner you were using, it could be a bad deal. Have a bad day. Not into bad days. So I literally just lined up those holes on the bottom of this pad, and uh, we're pushing it on there. I don't really get hung up about it being perfectly centered on the pad. This is a random orbit sander anyway. Um, so now what I'm going to do, I'm going to kind of be closer to the camera here. And you'll see there's like a rib right in here. And that rib can be a little bit challenging. You can hand sand that if you got a pad or just take one of these discs and do that. But for, the, for what I'm doing today, I kind of have it figured out how to aim this sander. You'll just kind of like tilt it a little bit and hit that whenever you're going around in different spots. So it's going to be a little bit noisy. Bear with me while I do that. Another thing is this lid does have a little bit of a bow to it. So you'll notice I'm kind of working around the outside first. Then I'm going to go around this rib and the, and the lip on the barrel. Then I'm going to move in and do the middle, which is the easy part. One more thing I should point out while I'm at this is you're going to want to make sure that you're wearing nitrile gloves when you're doing this, or some kind of gloves anyway. I prefer these. These are from Harbor Freight. You guessed it. Um, they're just a 7 mil mechanics glove. They're super cheap. I, uh, but anyway, um, you want to do that because as you wipe the oil off of this material, your oil off your hands and sweating and all that stuff, you know, I mean, whatever's on your hands is going to get on the barrel. So you just wear these gloves, don't wipe your face, you know, that kind of stuff. Make sure that you're not getting any oils or anything on this while you're sanding. Once we're done sanding this entire barrel, then we're going to go ahead and wipe it down one more time. But we just want to prevent as much as we can. Remember, prep is 90% of what we're doing. Okay, now I've got this part of my lip, so I'm going to kind of tilt this. I usually rest it on this outside bead, and I'm just going to run this sander around like this. Now we're going to tilt it the other way and do the inside. And another thing I'll do is as I'm going around, I'm going to kind of dip in and out in and out you'll see me doing that as i'm going down off of this edge of this rib down into the flat right here and getting that now i'm just going to make one run around the peak of that rib and then i'm going to flip it like this and get around the inside
Now, the last part on this lid is we're going to run around the top of this. And I, I, use, I tend to do a little bit at a time and just kind of work my way around it in a motion like this. It's going to be pretty fast. Okay, so we've got the lid completely done. Usually what I do is I'll set this aside and then I'll flip the barrel over upside down. This exact process is what I'll do on the bottom of the barrel. Then I'm gonna lay it on its side. So I'm not gonna cover everything I just talked about. I'm just gonna flip it over and do it. Okay, guys, that's that on this. We're going to flip it over. I'm going to re-aim the camera just a little bit. Okay, guys, we're down to the final step. We're going to sand the side of this barrel. Now, I, I kind of use a pattern, and I like to I like to keep things going the same direction and everything. So I start where the seam is. That's going to help me kind of aim. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take the sander. I'm going to go this way along the seam like this because where that seam is, it's a little bit flat on both sides. It's going to be easier to cover that that way. When I'm done with that, I'm gonna come over here, I'm gonna run this way, and I'm gonna start on the edge and work my way across. Now, as you're sanding, you'll see the little scratches that this sander puts on the, the material. And that's a good indicator of where you've sanded and where you have not sanded. As you go, you're just going to continue to do this pattern that I just had until you get all the way around the barrel and come back to your seam where you started. When you get to the back to the seam, you're going to do that same motion, and then you're going to run horizontally across this seam again to get this flat. Then you've done all the way around the barrel, and you know where you did and did not sand. So anyway... Let's just pretend that I sanded this entire video because you don't need to watch another three minutes of me doing that. The next step after that is we're going to wipe this entire thing down again. Let me reset the camera and I'll do the lid since we've already sanded that and I'll show you how. Okay, now for this operation, we're going to get a new clean towel. We don't want to have all the oil we just wiped off from the other towel on this drum after we sanded it. We're trying to keep a really, really clean, uh, controlled situation as the wind blows my towel around we're trying to make sure that we're not recontaminating this barrel you could even if you're if you're really hung up on it you could even get a new set of gloves if you want um once again all we're going to do is just put a dab of do you i folded my towel in half about three times and then we're just going to wipe around and i don't know if the camera can see it but there's all them scratches are even all the way across this thing and you can still see there's even some pretty dark stuff coming off just from what I just did. You might even go as far as to wipe this thing down two or three times until I usually go until I don't see that dark stuff on my towel anymore. We're gonna, you could actually flip over to the other side. Don't recommend having a cigarette or nothing while you're doing this. You know. Maybe stay away from the firebox on your smoker. That's probably a good idea. There you go. See, we're still getting a little bit of that grease off of there. So we're going to fold it inside out. There's still some cleaner there. And go ahead and wipe it again. We just really, really, really want to make sure that we get 100% of that oil off of this thing because it will cause our lid or our paint not to stick. I'm pretty happy with that. I could go one more time probably. Let it air off and you can hit it again. 
Um, but anyway, so that's how you do the barrel. Now, for all of your exterior parts, whatever they are, it doesn't matter. This process is identical. The only thing that you might change is depending on what paint you buy. If you get like a, um, I don't even remember, Valor or something like whatever that paint is that you can get at uh, like Krylon, um, like the, the paint you get in rattle cans at the auto parts stores and stuff like that, or uh, um, maybe a different brand, Benjamin Moore or something like that. Just read the label to see what is compatible with that paint and the most important instructions on there are the surface prep part. If you don't do your surface prep part correctly, you will have issues with your paint sticking or lasting a long time. So since I've already etched all this material and the paint is self etching, I'm fairly confident this paint job is gonna be a good paint job, especially if I can keep all the oily hands off of it while I'm waiting to paint it. So anyway guys, hope that helped. If you haven't already, go check out this kit. Link is in the description. Get on over there and get you a Super 55 Drum Smoker kit. Currently, we have free shipping when you buy the, the kit with a barrel. And we'll even pre-drill the barrel for you for free if you want. Doesn't matter to us. Um, anyway, that's like $649 to your doorstep. You can also look for our li list of dealers um, on our website. Uh, they're all over the United States. So you can actually just go right down. If you're in a bigger city or whatever, you can go right down the street and pick one up. So anyway, let me know if you have any questions. The chat on the website, smokerplans.net, is active, and it does go directly to my phone, and I can help you with anything you need. So anyway, till next time, keep your smoke thin and blue. Catch you on the flip side.